I'm Grant Gilchrist and these are the moments that made me. The, the first picture is a picture of me playing for Al Rugby Club. Um, that's where my rugby journey started. My granddad played there, um, my dad, my uncle um, used to play and I, I used to go down and kick a ball about with kid friends at the time who became my best mates. Um, we used to kick a ball about on a Saturday when they first played, um, eat pie and beans, um, generally muck about at the clubhouse and then Sunday morning, um, many minis um, and that's, that's where my rugby started. Um, I absolutely love the club. Um, we were a real deep connection in my family, you know, just really, like I said, um, all my family played there, but my, my granny used to hand out the raffle tickets and my mum used to help out, so it was a real family club and, and still is, uh, and I love getting back there to, to see them and they, I let them, I'll, I'll make sure I let them know that they played a huge part in, in helping me become a professional rugby player. What other parts of your time there made you sort of fall in love with rugby? The people, for me, I always say about the people, it, it's the people throughout my whole career that probably are the things that are most valuable to me. I think, um, like I said already, my be some of my best mates, guys that became my best men, I met Al with Rugby Club. You know, I love going back there and it's always funny to, you know, it doesn't matter what you've been doing, this, I'll still get ribbed about something. So I think uh, I, was, I was speaking to somebody after the, one of the games in the autumn and uh, he says, oh, you're playing pretty well. It's like shocking kickoff take against South Africa, though. That was terrible. And that just summed it up to me, like there was no airs and graces. And, and that's, the way I would, that's the way I would want it to go. Um, so the next photo I want to talk about is um, this classic one of me, uh, George and Harry Leonard before we went off to, to Christchurch um, for the McPhail scholarship. That was 2011, just after the earthquake um, in New Zealand. So. You know, an interesting time to be going there, but obviously Canterbury and um, Canterbury Rugby is probably one of the strongest areas for um, rugby in the world. You know, the players they produce at the time, you know, Richie McCaw, Dan Carter, all these guys were, were playing for the Crusaders um, and we were in there um, training with their academy guys. You know, it was a, a massive opportunity for me to go um, to the other side of the world, um, I actually loved it because it was like you'd come through, we were in the academy, you kind of knew everybody and you were just thrust into a team where nobody knew who you were or you know rated you at all, you had to just prove yourself. Um, and I felt like that kind of process in itself along with some really top class coaching um, and mentoring, I, mean, I was so lucky, Sam Whitelock. Um, mentored me when I was out there and you, you know, we went for dinner a couple of times, he'd sit down and go through my games with me and, and that kind of input to, what was a 20, 20 year old, 21 year old, um, yeah, it, it was invaluable and, and going, getting that exposure, but also that away from home, prove yourself, um, great for character building, um, just get, learning to get on with people and Met, met some great people over there as well and had a, had a blast for, um, I think it was four months, three, four months. Um, lived with a family who I keep in touch with now, the Haggarts, um, who are great people and uh, yeah, always take a keen interest in my career and try and catch up with them on FaceTime, you know, once or twice a year, which is lovely as well. It's almost like it became a bit of a family for me over there. So the next photo I talk about a picture of me and Matty after um, after beating Toulouse at Murrayfield um, for Edinburgh. That was both our first seasons. Uh, I'm the same age as Matty, so we played age group together. We were close mates, um, and yeah, I think playing with Matty, Dents, and Rambo, who were all my age, and we were all good mates, and we kind of came through that season. Um, and we all, we all three of us played in that. Um, Quarter final, and it was a, such a special day for the club. Um, you know, I remember Chunk saying in the changing room, he was probably he was probably my age then, <laughs> um, but I age now. But he he said, and he never used to speak much, but he, he spoke passionately. But you know, he'd been at the club for however many years and played 200 and whatever games, and 
he'd only ever played in one quarter-final of the Heineken Cup and this was our chance to, to play again and um, you know, such a special day, um, I think it was close to 40,000 at Murrayfield, it felt full, it was the first time I'd ever experienced that level of you know, occasion, that level of game um, and yeah, to come out on the, on the winning side against you know, a, a European power is like Toulouse and to be a 21 year old playing his first season and get that um, was really special and still you know, a highlight of my career. You know, we, I've had, you know, been fortunate to, to have some more beyond that, but um, it still still stacks up there as, as a great day just because of what it was for the club and the atmosphere and everything. It was it was really special. That kind of season breaking through, you had guys like Four Day, Mossy, Mike were you know examples of professionalism and. Um, that as a young guy was such a such a positive influence and, and something that you know I've always tried to emulate from my career. I, I don't know if it is possible to be as, as professional as Ross Ford, but we can all try. <laughs> yeah, so the next picture is a a classic. It's you know the photo shoot from my first cap, which should be a, a really happy memory, but with the get up, <laughs> the the t-shirt riding up, the the scrum rash on the eyes, the Lego haircut, the trainers. <laughs> it's not it's not me looking at my best, but it's it's a fond memory. It's uh, yeah, you know, everyone's dreamed to play for Scotland, to play a first cap away in France. I think it was a uh, Saturday night at like nine o'clock. Um, it was raining, but the noise was incredible, and I'd never yeah, it was it was right up there. Like as, as, a, as a first cap is, but you know, it's something that you're never going to forget. And um, yeah, a real introduction to Test Rugby as well. You know, playing against the French in France, it doesn't get much tougher than that. And I think that actually stand me in good stead that I'd been, you know, I'd had a start straight away and in such a tough Test match and tough, tough arena that, you know, I managed to, to do all right in the game and, you know, feel like oh no, I can I can do this, I can I can play at this level and, and that was that was important for me. You spoke about the nine o'clock kickoff, how were the nerves? I remember it well. I remember the the hotel room and just, you know, falling asleep and waking up and it still being ten hours till kick off. You know, go for a snack and it's still seeming like forever and you know, the walkthroughs and you know, all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah. It felt like probably one of the longest days of my life and by the time you get to play the game and the after match function I think something like getting back to the hotel at like two two in the morning after a game having waited for it all, all day it was yeah amazing experience but yeah there, there was a few nerves I don't know. So this is a picture of uh, me and Rambo and our two boys um, that's my boy Freddie and his, his son Ollie um, me and Rams have, well, like I said, we come through age grades together. He was um, my captain at Scotland under 18s. And our careers have kind of followed a similar path. Like we're, we're great mates on and off the pitch. Having our sons there, I've, I've got two sons, um, and he's got a little boy as well. And his wife Natalie is good mates with my wife Chloe, and um, we've come through, you know. A kind of leadership journey probably as well. Through the years I think we, we co-captained Edinburgh, we seem to work pretty well together and um, I've been making his line out, throwing you know, everything that it's been by Colin so wonderfully over the last 10 years. So I make his life nice and easy, I don't think that hookers get an easy job, they just get called to the right space all the time. This is the last one, I'm trying not to have a big, big soppy bugger so uh, I'll try not to get emotional speaking about this one but um, this is just, you know, what it means to me to play in front of my kids and, and my wife Chloe, um, who's always been, you know, the rock in my career, you know, ups, downs, whatever. Like, um, she's always been there for me, and especially in, since her uh, eldest, the, the biggest one there, um, who's decided not to look at the camera. Uh, <laughs> he. 
he was born 19 months ago and realised how much she has to sacrifice to allow me to do my job and to, to um, you know, live, live out my childhood dreams. Um, she's there grafting away with, you know, two kids. She was doing a master's. <laughs> she was, uh, she was under the pump, and you know, just the way that um, she looks after the kids. And for me now to to look to the stands and see my sons and my family there, it, it means everything to me. And in a selfish way, it it creates an easy like switch off from rugby. Um, you know, you come home when lose or draw. You know, it puts everything in perspective, and they don't care whether you. I think we had a perfect one. Me and Mish once spoke about it because we beat we beat France uh, last Six Nations over in Paris, and obviously amazing. And come home, and kids don't care that you went and won in Paris. The week after, we went back to Paris, and we got we got pumped by 50 points by Racing. And we said on the bus, oh, they still won't care when we go back this time. <laughs> so I think that was a great example of you know highs and lows, but also what. What having kids does it creates that you know when you're in there you're just dad and that, that's all they care about they just want you to be there for them um, and that's something I love um, and it, it you know helps me a lot in my in my career like and just creating a balance but also when you run out and you know they're in the crowd it's it's really special and seeing you know how much like having your mum and dad with the you know with their grandkids there and and Chloe it's it's awesome.